So first, I want to do a quick little recap. How did we get here? Well, we've had, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum breaking out of basing patterns uh, since last summer. We were really early on this. The Bitcoin below 10K was going to be an explosive base breakout. And that the, the equal X target, if we took the length of this move, placed it at this low, we are going to be going to 23,650. And then in October, Bitcoin started to move. And then it got really serious. Uh, once Bitcoin started breaking above these highs, that Bitcoin was about to explode. I said Bitcoin was about to explode to 22K on October 11th. I said it again on October 8th that Bitcoin was about to explode to 22K. We also had Ethereum um, as a really good hold from as low as 300. Okay, so what happened? Well, Bitcoin did, uh, as we know, Bitcoin did uh, explode uh, above this 2017 high. Right, so what we thought was going to happen is what did happen. All of these other coins, like Litecoin and Ethereum and Ripple, were going to start playing follow the leader. Okay, this was my Ethereum chart. I tweeted this on uh, December 23rd. I said Ethereum, Litecoin, and Ripple are going to follow Bitcoin one by one above this 2017 high. Of course, we know Ethereum did, in fact, make it above this 2017 high. Ethereum resting around 2,000 right now. You know, Litecoin has uh, doubled uh, from this post and Litecoin looks like it's next to break above this 2017 high. But I was really interested in Ripple, Ripple playing follow the leader, right? This big sell-off was, you know, with news, right? News uh, that the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, was investigating Ripple. So that led to this sell-off at the very end of the year and Ripple was around 25 cents. And if we looked at this 2017 high, that uh, Bitcoin and Dogecoin had already broken above, we had really good evidence that Ethereum, Litecoin, and Ripple were all going to follow Bitcoin above this 2017 high. You know, Ethereum already has, Litecoin's on its way, and we believe Ripple is on its way. So let's start with Ripple uh, real quick. This is just a really good example of a few uh, things that we can learn from, right? The first thing we can learn from is don't trade headlines, right? Uh, I get a lot of comments on my videos, you know, Credit Suisse most recently, you know, I said Credit Suisse was a really good buy below 11, and everyone commented, well, there's no fundamental reason for that to happen, right? They just had this, you know, this hedge fund blow up, you know, yada, 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 and it's like, that, that's by design, right? So what happened when they, uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, started investigating Ripple? Ripple was pulled off of a lot of uh, popular uh, crypto exchanges. Not all of them. It stayed on FTX. It stayed on KuCoin. Uh, I'm pretty sure it stayed on Binance. But Coinbase pulled Ripple off the exchanges. Well, what was happening? While everyone in their retail sphere was calling Ripple a scam, the institutions were accumulating Ripple like crazy, right? And if we took the uh, beginning of Ripple's all-time trading, connected it with this wave one high, and then connected it with this wave one, with this wave two low, not only had Bitcoin broken above this high, but Ripple had a beautiful pitchfork. And when I say beautiful, I mean, look at this wick right here. Look at this wick's reaction on this candle. This is uh, the weekly chart. Look at this weekly candle wick hit the median of this Andrews pitchfork on Ripple. And then at the time of this sell-off, we had more confirmation on this pitchfork because Ripple had a beautiful tag of the lower bound of this pitchfork. So I tweeted, I said, Ripple, you know, th this is a, a huge opportunity and I got a lot of, you know, hate for this. I got a lot of hate for saying that Ripple was, you know, a big buy, right? My chart looks like the poop emoji. You know, I was going to have fun staying poor, right? Uh, I don't understand crypto. I'm a troll. You know, I'm an idiot, right? Uh, stop and go make decent money writing stocks that are money printing. You know, I was a low IQ degenerate who thought Ripple was cheap, <laughs> you know? So, right, you're not going to get a lot of support you know, from the peanut gallery when you're buying these stocks at really good times, right? Do you think institutions were calling Ripple a scam? You know, do you think rip, rip, institutions, you know, they clearly weren't uh, having the same sentiment about Ripple that retail was, and that's by design. And if we looked at this chart, which we did, Ripple had a gorgeous reaction on the median of the pitchfork. It had a gorgeous reaction on the lower bound. And guess what? Ripple's gone from 25 cents to a dollar. Right. So, you know, it, it was a, it was a great pick. Right. It, it's quadrupled in less than four months uh, with no options, expiration, expiration risk. Right. That's an incredible trade. And it's not done. 
It's going to go from the lower bound of this pitchfork. It's going to go all the way to the median of this pitchfork, okay? It's going to do exactly what Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin have already done. It, they, it is going to break above this high as well. Um, do I like Ripple uh, at a dollar? No, okay? Because I was talking about Ripple a lot um, below 30 cents. You know, even below 40 cents, I was okay with it. I'm not really the type of trader who likes to buy stocks when they're up, you know, 150, 200% in a couple of months, okay? But if we're not interested in Ripple, what we could do is say, okay, if Ripple's gonna go from the lower bound of this pitchfork to the meeting of this pitchfork, odds are the crypto bull market is not over, okay? So if someone theoretically is holding Ripple below 30 cents, below 40 cents, below 50 cents, I want you to know um, we have a gorgeous reaction on the median of the pitchfork. We have gorgeous reactions on the lower bound. Ripple is going back to the median of the pitchfork. Okay, the minimum, minimum conservative target is 3.40. Okay, I had in this post that that was going to be reached within six to eight months of late December. Okay, and we're on target for that. So we're on target potentially by the end of this summer, Ripple reaching 3.40. Okay, I definitely think Ripple will reach 3.40 by the end of the year. Would I buy it at a dollar? No, because I liked it below 30 cents. Okay, so let's look at some of these uh, other crypto names, right? If Ripple's gonna keep going higher, you know, above this, you know, 2018 high, right? What, what are the odds that the, the rest of the Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum bull market is over? Very slim, okay? If we look at these wave counts right now on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, uh, very similar story, extremely similar story right now uh, for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. All of them seem to have formed a wave one, an ABC correction, putting in a wave two low, and now they are within wave three. So basically all three of those coins, um, Ripple, not Ripple, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin put in a major low on March 1st. And from there, all three of those coins formed a wave one, an A, B, C correction to put in a wave two low, and now they're within a wave three. So let's start with Bitcoin right now. The invalidation level is all the way down here at 50,496. Okay, that's the invalidation level. If that level is broken, then that means that this wave two is not complete. We'll look at the Ethereum chart to show why it is unlikely um, that Bitcoin is not already in a wave three because Ethereum has already broken above this high after forming the exact same highs and lows, okay? So Bitcoin forms a wave one, and this is from March 1st to March 15th. So that's about two weeks. And if we think that we're within a wave three, wave three is generally faster and stronger than wave one. So in the next two, three weeks, potentially by the end of the month, most likely by the end of this month, in my unprofessional opinion, Bitcoin is going to go on this run to the meeting of the pitchfork, and it will conservatively reach the equal legs target of wave one, taking Bitcoin to 69,234. I really think that's going to be hit by the end of the month. We're going to see Bitcoin go about 12,000 points higher. Okay, that's a pretty big deal. Because if Bitcoin is going 12,000 points higher, and Ethereum is going higher, and Litecoin is going higher, you know, what are the odds that the stock market is topping? You don't want to get too carried away with your correlations, but these large cap uh, cryptocurrencies generally have a pretty good correlation with the stock market, okay? But let's focus on the coins and the individual charts for now. Bitcoin, wave one, that takes two weeks. A, B, C correction puts in a wave too low. Ethereum mimics this pattern and Ethereum's already broken above this high. So there's a very high likelihood that Bitcoin is within a wave three. Just in my education right now, look at these beautiful wick reactions on the median of this pitchfork. That's what I love to see. We have three candles right here with the wicks of the daily candle perfectly tagging the median of the pitchfork. Now we're on the lower bound of the pitchfork. We're getting ready to run back to the median of this pitchfork. So this looks really pretty right now. The median is going to be a reliable wave three target and the equal legs target of 69,200 is going to be a reliable target. So what happens from there? Well, the textbook scenario, let's just assume that Bitcoin stops at the conservative target of 69,420. 
69,234. Let's assume that Bitcoin stops at that level. That would complete wave three. The pullback would be to the 38.2% retracement of wave three. So the classic wave four in Elliott wave theory is the 38.2% retracement of wave three. That would bring uh, Bitcoin to basically a perfect retest of this wave one high before it starts to wave five higher. In Elliott wave theory, unless it's an ending diagonal or a leading diagonal, wave five is generally uh, at least the same length as wave one. It's extremely rare that a wave five will be shorter than wave one. So normally, uh, wave five being the length of wave one is a conservative target as well. So if we take the length of wave one and we put it at the 38.2% retracement of what would be the end of wave three, then once Bitcoin corrects this wave three and puts in a wave four low around 62,444, then Bitcoin would be going on yet another leg higher. And then the wave five target takes Bitcoin all the way to 81,000. So this is a very conservative count that Bitcoin could be going to 81,000 by mid-May. We, we should see Bitcoin above 80K by mid-May. You know, that's a pretty big deal. Okay, let's look at Ethereum right now. Ethereum is giving us a lot of our confirmation right now because Ethereum has the exact same points as Bitcoin, okay? Makes the exact same low on March 1st, goes on a run that takes two weeks and makes the exact same high on March 15th. So that completes a wave one. Then Ethereum has an A, B, C correction to put in a wave two low. Ethereum has broken above this wave one high. So Ethereum has confirmed, Ethereum has confirmed that it is within a wave three. So the 161.8% extension of wave one is the textbook wave three target. Okay, for Bitcoin, we just took the length of wave one because we were being conservative. Okay, for Ethereum, let's just look at the textbook wave. The textbook wave three uh, target is the 161.8% extension of wave one. That would take Ethereum all the way to 2,356. So Ethereum, we're looking for 300 points higher. And we should see 300 points higher, in my opinion, very conservatively by the end of the month. I actually think this is going to happen in the next two weeks, could happen in the next week. But definitely by the end of the month, in my unprofessional opinion, Ethereum is going to reach 2,356 from there. The classic wave four correction would take Ethereum back down to 2000, which would be a perfect retest of this high. Okay, the wave four and Elliott wave theory, if you're just using your eyes, you want the wave four to retest the high of a prior wave one. Okay, so this retest of the 38.2% retracement would be a retest of the, these highs, and then that would just be wave four for Ethereum. From there, Wave five would be at least the length of wave one. We take the length of wave one, we put it at 2,048 because that's the 38.2% retracement of wave three. And then Ethereum is going to 2,691, right? We're talking about Ethereum conservatively going about $650 higher, okay? the uh, We'll say a stop for this right now is gonna be uh, 1,780, okay? The invalidation level is this wave too low of 1,550. If 1,550 is broken, then this is not a wave three in progress, okay? This would be, I really don't think that there's any other way to count this, so I expect to be right here. Um, but let's just say the invalidation level is 1,550. We'll use this low right here, 1,780 is the stop. Those levels hold, uh, Ethereum should be going to 2,356 because that's the 161.8% extension of wave one. Then the wave four correction is the 38.2% uh, retracement of wave three. And then a wave five higher, which would be the length of wave one, takes Ethereum all the way to 2,691. Okay, this should happen around mid-May that we have this entire uh, wave completed. Okay, right now, we don't know how long this wave four will take, okay? Sometimes wave fours can consolidate for a while. Sometimes they can be very quick, okay? But the bottom line is by the end of this month, Ethereum should be at 2,356. 
Bitcoin should be at 69K, okay? And then we'd have a wave four correction that would be quite shallow, and then we would take another wave five higher for both Bitcoin and Ethereum, okay? So Ethereum, it goes to 2,356 for wave three by the end of the month, has a shallow wave four correction, and then this wave five higher will take Ethereum to 2,691 sometime around May, okay? This could happen very quickly, okay? I'll update if this happens very quickly. I try to be, you know, on the more conservative end with my time targets. Litecoin, let's look at Litecoin. Um, I like Litecoin a lot here. If we zoom out on Litecoin a little bit, unlike Ethereum and Bitcoin, it is not yet broken uh, above this 2017 high. Neither has Ripple, okay? So longer term, we might be looking at Litecoin as an outperformer. Okay, let's keep that in the back of our minds. If we look at Litecoin right now, we have the exact same wave one from, you guessed it, March 1st, the exact same wave one high uh, from, you guessed it, March 15th, the exact same points that we had on Ethereum, the exact same points we had on Bitcoin, okay? So Litecoin goes on this wave one, it takes two weeks. It has an ABC correction and confirms a wave two low has been put in. We know this wave two low has been put in because Litecoin then goes on this impulsive wave three rally and it breaks above the wave one high. So the 161.8% extension for Litecoin is 277. Then the wave four uh, would be the 38.2% retracement for Litecoin. This is the wave four right here. I don't know if you can see it. The Wave four would be the 38.2% retracement of wave three for Litecoin. Okay, so that wave four target, assuming that 277 is the exact top, the wave four target is the 38.2% retracement of wave three. That takes Litecoin down to 235. Then we take the length of wave one, we place it at the wave four low, and we're looking at Litecoin going to 311. Damn near 100 points higher from when I posted about it yesterday. Okay. You know, what's, what's the overall thing? I like Litecoin a lot. I want 193. Uh, we're going to use that as our stop for this uh, potential wave count. For this wave count, we're looking at 193 as the stop. To be completely honest, the invalidation is all the way down here at 167. So we'll use 193 as the stop. If 193 is broken, uh, I will update uh, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Okay. I think we've already seen this major turn happen. I think that Litecoin will go to 277 by the end of the month with Ethereum and with Bitcoin. It will have a shallow wave four correction to the 38.2% retracement of wave three. And then from 235, it will conservatively go on another wave, uh, another leg higher for wave five, which will be the length of wave one placed at the wave four low. Okay, so that's Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum. And then for a trader who theoretically uh, has been holding Ripple below 30 cents, below 40 cents, you know, definitely we consider taking profit up, you know, 300, 400 percent. But also, to be quite frank, I expect Ripple to go the length of wave one, place it the wave too low. We have gorgeous reactions right here on the median of this pitchfork. We have so much confirmation right now that this is a valid pitchfork with these reactions on the lower bound. Ripple is going to go back to the median of the pitchfork. The conservative target is the length of wave one, placed at the wave too low. That takes Ripple to 3.40, okay? Which means Ripple would break above this, you know, early 2018 high, and then it's watch out, okay? But once Ripple's above this high, you know, we saw what Dogecoin and Bitcoin did once they broke above this high. Okay, I'm just saying, I think 3.40 in the longer term cycles is conservative. Okay, I'm gonna throw you a curveball here. Let's talk about the stock market real quick. This is QQQ. This is the NASDAQ. Okay, love what I'm seeing from the NASDAQ right here. And here's why. This is an ABC correction. We have basically all the confirmation in the world that this is a completed ABC correction because we're almost above the high of the uh, beginning of wave A, okay? So once the high of wave A is broken, that confirms the end of an ABC correction, okay? Some wave theories will say, no, this could be an expanded flat, okay? There's no reason to assume that right now, okay? And here's uh, another reason why. QQQ 
has broken, has passed the equal legs target. Okay, so if this was just the wave C, it should have stopped. It shouldn't have gotten as far as it did. Okay, it should have stopped around 331. It passed that today. Okay, we're not all in the clear yet. We need QQQ to get the 340. That will do two things. First, if QQQ reaches 340, then it will have broken above this ABC correction. Okay, that will have confirmed this is a completed ABC correction. That will have confirmed that this was all consolidation. Another thing it will have done is this is our wave one. This is our wave one uh, from this March low. Okay, this is our wave one from the March 5th low. Then QQQ has an A, B, C correction. Okay, it breaks above this wave one high, and QQQ is on its way right now to 340. 340 is the 161.8% extension of wave one. Why is that important? Well, if QQQ reaches and passes wave, if QQQ reaches and passes the 161.8% extension of wave one, then this has to be a wave three. Okay, you can't be a bear and say this is an A, B, C if QQQ reaches 340. From there, we would have a shallow 38.2% retracement to 327, and then we would expect that that would complete a wave four. So the count right now is that this is a confirmed A, B, C correction for QQQ. It's gonna go on a wave one, it's completed an A, B, C correction, and it's broken above the wave one high. That confirms that this is a, either a wave C or a wave three in progress. It has passed the equal legs target. So it is likely within a wave three, we will know it is within a wave three once it reaches 340 because that is the 161.8% extension of wave one. From there, it will have, uh, it will be due for a 38.2% retracement of wave three to complete wave four at 327. Okay, once this wave four low is put in around 327, we would be expecting a wave five higher, which is at least the length of wave one. That takes QQQ to around 354. 